With the right multi-class, you can have 24 armor class by level 1, 29 armor class by level 2, and up to 37 armor class by level 5. And we're going to do that because we're going to build the shieldiest shield wearer that ever shielded, creating Naofumi, the shield hero, in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. First things first, we got to pick a race, and of course we're going to go with a human. And not just any human, but a human variant. This allows us to choose a skill right away, so we're going to choose Perception, because then you can be more aware of your surroundings, and you get to choose a feat right away. You may assume I would choose Shield Master, but for the purposes of this build, it's not going to help us that much. It only allows you to shove as a bonus action with your shield and gives you some bonuses to your dexterity saving throws and that's not all that helpful for this build. So instead we're going to choose Fighting Initiate. This allows us to choose a fighting style so we're going to take Defense. This gives us a plus one to our armor class as long as we're wearing armor or a shield. Then when it comes to a background we're going to go with Folk Hero. You are the shield hero and this entire background revolves around the idea that there's a defining event in your life and you were a pretty normal person before, and then all of a sudden, you're destined for so much more. And that feels pretty spot on for an isekai. This gives us skill proficiencies in animal handling and survival. Then when it comes to some stats, I had to think about the fact that when Naofumi rocks his rage armor, it looks like heavy armor. So we need some strength to be able to hold that up. We're going to put 15 points into our strength so you can get the heaviest heavy armor without issue. And then for some multi-classing, we're going to make sure we put 13 points into intelligence and wisdom, and then boosting each of them with a plus one from our racial bonus bringing them both to 14. We do want to make sure we have at least a little bit of health, so we're going to put 14 points into our constitution, and that leaves us with one point left over. Now, Fumi isn't particularly charismatic, at least not early in the series, so we're going to just throw that point into dexterity, bringing it to 9, and dump our charisma. We need to make sure we get some armor proficiencies. So as far as the starting class, we're going to go with Cleric. This gives us skill proficiencies with light armor, medium armor, and shields, and simple weapons, as well as giving us saving throws and wisdom and charisma. Then we get to choose two skills, so we're going to choose History and Religion. When you take your first level in Cleric, you get some spell casting, which is really going to help, and you get to choose a Divine Domain, otherwise known as a subclass. And we need to make sure we get more armor class, and we can use heavier armor. So we're going to choose the Forge Domain. This gives us skill proficiencies with heavy armor and smith's tools, so now if we can find some plate armor at level 1, which might be a little difficult, but if we can pull it off, that brings our armor class to 18 from the heavy armor, and of course we're going to be wielding a shield, giving us another plus two to our armor class, bringing it to 20. And don't forget, you had that defense fighting style, so that brings your armor class up to 21. Then on top of that, you also get the feature from the Forge Domain, Blessing of the Forge. So you gain the ability to boost up a weapon, giving it a plus one bonus, or you can do the same to a piece of armor giving it plus one bonus to its armor class. So you can bless your shield, and now our armor class is 22. And don't forget, we have some spell casting, and clerics get access to this great first level spell called Shield of Faith. It lasts for up to 10 minutes, and it gives you a plus two bonus to your armor class, meaning that right at level one, you have an armor class of 24. Now it's time to do our first multi-class, and we're going to be jumping into Wizard. When you take your first level of Wizard, you get some Arcane Recovery, so you can regain some spell slots on a short rest instead of just a long rest, which is going to be helpful because Wizards are all about spell casting, which you get access to a whole nother spell list by doing this multi-class. And that's really helpful because now, if anybody tries to attack you, you can use your reaction to use the spell Shield. This gives you plus 5 to your armor class until the start of your next turn, meaning that your armor class has been boosted up to 29. But we can't stop there. Instead of taking second level of wizard, which don't worry, we're probably going to swing on back, but for now, we're going to jump over to fighter. This allows us to use martial weapons in case we ever want to, but we're focusing more on the shield here. Then from your first level of fighter, you get another fighting style. And since you use your shield to help defend other people on occasion, we're going to take the fighting style, Protection. This makes it so you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on an attack roll if it's against another creature that you can see within 5 feet of you. It requires you to be wielding a shield as if you're sticking out your shield to help shield an ally. Additionally, at first level fighter, you get second win. So now as a bonus action, you can regain hit points equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level, which you can do once per short or long rest. Then at second level of fighter, you get action surge, so you can take one additional action on your turn. 
fight, but you can only do this once per short or long rest. Then at third level of fighter, you get a martial archetype, otherwise known as a subclass. So we're going to grab the subclass, Battle Master. This gives us the feature, Combat Superiority. So you can learn three maneuvers. These are special battle tactics that you manage to pull off in the middle of fighting, which you can use superiority dice on. You get four superiority dice, which are currently D8s. If you level up enough in fighter, the size of the dice does increase, but we're not going to worry about that too much. However, as far as those three maneuvers, you're pretty limited. Now, Fumi doesn't really use real weapons, so we need to focus on the abilities that don't need them. So the three maneuvers we're going to grab are Commander's Strike, so you can tell one of your allies to attack for you, allowing you to forego one of your attacks and use a bonus action, which does come at a heavy cost, forcing you to spend your bonus action and give up at least one of your attacks, but they get to add your superiority die to their attack's damage roll. And then you want to grab two that can boost up your armor class. You can use Bait and Switch, which will allow you to boost up your armor class or an ally's armor class, and you can grab evasive footwork, allowing you to just focus on yourself. Both of them allow you to expend one superiority die which is a D8, and you can add that to your armor class, meaning that you have up to a plus 8. And evasive footwork doesn't cost you any sort of action, bonus action, or reaction. It just means you have to move, so you can use this in conjunction with everything else, meaning that the 29 in armor class just got boosted by 8 more points, bringing your armor class to 37 at level 5. But now, it's not just about armor class. Now, Fumi has plenty of unique abilities that he manages to pull off, and most of them are going to be more focused on spells. So, we're going to jump back over to Wizard. Taking our second level in Wizard, we are still going to focus on the whole shield idea, because second level of Wizard gives us an arcane tradition, otherwise known as a subclass. And the one subclass that feels the most like a shield hero is probably going to be Abjuration. When you take the School of Abjuration subclass, class being a wizard, you get Abjuration Savant, so it costs you half as much gold and time to copy an Abjuration spell. But more importantly, you get the feature Arcane Ward. So when you cast any Abjuration spell of first level or higher, you can simultaneously use a strand of the spell's magic to create a magical ward on yourself. The ward has hit points equal to twice your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier. So whenever you take damage, the ward takes damage instead. If the ward is reduced to zero hit points, you take any of the remaining damage, and the ward can't absorb any more damage, at least until you cast another abjuration spell, and it regains a number of hit points equal to twice the spell's level. Which means, if you're in the dire situation with your 37 armor class, and you're casting shield, you also have an arcane ward that automatically pops up. Then we really need to just keep focusing on our spell casting. So we're going to go ahead and take the rest of our levels just in Wizard. That gives us a handful of features from choosing the School of Abjuration. So at 6th level of Abjuration Wizard, you get Projected Ward. So you can use your reaction to protect an ally with your Arcane Ward as long as your ally is within 30 feet of you. But it follows the rest of the rules revolving around your Arcane Ward. Then at 10th level of Abjuration Wizard, you get Improved Abjuration. So when you cast any Abjuration spell that requires you to make an ability check as part of casting that spell, such as using Counterspell or Dispel Magic, you can add your Proficiency bonus to the Ability check. And then, at 14th level of Abjuration Wizard, you get Spell Resistance. So you have advantage on all saving throws against spells, and you have resistance to any damage from those spells. And if we take the rest of our levels in Wizard, we do get four ability score improvements. But we're going to throw in a little twist, which I'll save for just a second. We're going to take three of those ability score improvements and throw them into our intelligence, boosting it up by six and maxing it out at 20. And then for the last ability score improvement that you get at the 16th level of Wizard, I feel like it's only necessary that you finally take Shield Master. I mean, your max level as the shield hero, yeah, it's not going to help us as much, but but our dexterity is kind of low, and if we ever have to make a dexterity saving throw, especially to reduce damage from a spell, the Shield Master feature makes it so you can use your armor class from your shield and add it to your dexterity saving throw. And remember, we added a plus one to our shield thanks to being a Forge Cleric, meaning our dexterity saving throws get a plus three. And if it's a spell, we already have advantage on it. So at least we have that, even though our dexterity is a little lower. But no matter what, if you have to make a dexterity saving throw, you take only half damage thanks to this feat, and you can use your reaction to take no damage if you succeed on the saving throw. But even with that half damage, if it's from a spell, you have spell resistance, meaning you can cut the damage in half again, which is going to be really helpful because you have 
super low health with all those levels you took in Wizard. The last feature of Shield Master allows you to do a shove as a bonus action, but that's not going to help us out all that much. What's more important now is that we talk about some spells. We have plenty to sort out. If you want the full list, go ahead and check out my Patreon linked in the description down below, but I'll go ahead and highlight the important one. You get a couple cantrips from being a cleric, so grab resistance just because that's going to be most shieldy, and you only get three first level spells from your one level in cleric plus your wisdom modifier, but there's only one that we really care about highlighting, and we already established you're grabbing shield of faith. Then when it comes to all that wizard stuff, considering he's the shield hero, he has plenty of stuff that he can manage to pull off. With all the abilities he gains throughout the series between energy blasts and shield bashes and airstrike shield and shield prison there's a few things that we're gonna have to cover for some energy blast you're gonna want to grab the cantrip firebolt but focus more on the first level spell magic missile it feels more energy blast like and of course we already mentioned we're gonna grab the first level spell shield you want to be able to wield a handful of those little balloon things so you can use something like conjure minor elementals or summon lesser demons you want to grab some great defensive spells like wall of force and you want to make sure you pull off that shield prison with something like force cage there's plenty more energy blasts and defensive abilities and boosting abilities that we can throw in as far as spells but i don't want to make this video too long you're already pretty darn shieldy you got a crap ton of armor class and i'm hoping that i did now fumi the shield hero justice because this was requested a few times in the comments so if there's any builds that you want to see or you want to let me know what you think of this build in general feel free to let me know in the comments down below and if you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds feel free to check out my patreon linked in the description down below just like all of these incredible people and the especially incredible player character patrons ted z digimit Dana Dana Albader, Massey Sala, Andrew Nobles, Alex, Melendez Robinson, Karkat Kitsune, Z13, Yaksha Senpai, The Dino 21, and Benjamin. Then going above and beyond that is my Dungeon Master level patrons that I host D&D sessions for, which I stream over on Twitch and then post the VODs here on YouTube. Daniel Sweeten, Conman ZX, Nathaniel Sims, Cybersiety, Firebeam, Talon Starkey, Demiurge, Daniel Galvin, Michael, Eric Wade, Salvador, Kilo Kilo, and Heyo. Then going above anything I could possibly imagine is my God tier level patron. He helps me more than I ever expected, and that's game steak. So a very special thank you to him. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to be the shield hero, now Fumi, in Dungeons and Dragons.